All right, good morning. So today we are boondocking in Flagstaff and this is a beautiful place. It is, I mean, gorgeous. <laughs> we just left Chandler, so the valley as we call it in Arizona. And it was hot. I mean, I think this weekend it's getting to 115. And it's warm up here. To be perfectly honest, when we drove in yesterday, it was warm. I think it hit 87 or 90, which is warm in the bus when it's that hot. And one of the compromises you make when you have solar, you have to be in the sun. That's how solar works. It's 8.30 in the morning, and our bus is fully in the shade, even though this spot is a, a fairly open spot with not a lot of trees. Here, I'll do a full kind of 360 there's a couple trees behind me but we intentionally chose this spot because it doesn't have too many trees we won't get sun for probably another hour yesterday as i said was really warm and then towards the end of the day these trees right here about four maybe 4 30 they started throwing shade on the panels, which is okay, but we had been traveling most of the day and we didn't have them out all day. And so we got behind on power. So we have a generator here and we did run it for about three hours yesterday. And that's how we hooked up. It's very quiet. It's a very nice little generator. It's the Champion 4650 watts. We don't use it a lot, but on days like yesterday where most of the day we spent with the solar panels in, we ran low on power and we used it at the end of the night. So our system is designed so that we don't have to worry too much about power. It wasn't designed so that we would never use a generator or that we would never plug in or anything like that. It was designed with the goal of something less to worry about. <laughs> so in that regard, it has worked extremely well. So today, We'll take you through a typical solar day out here boondocking through the trees and everything. We're only getting 130 watts or so, but as soon as the sun peeks out from behind these trees, we'll start seeing some power. So we, we do log everything to the VRM. That's Victron's place where all the stats go. So we will do a whole day of, hey, what does this look like? So this morning we'll be working. We'll have computers on. Internet's always on, but everything runs as if we're on 30 or 50 amp shore power. We don't worry about running things. We don't turn the inverter off. We don't do any of that. We just run it. We woke up this morning and the battery was at about 50% after all of last night. The kids ran their air conditioner all night because they're crazy and they like the air conditioner on. So they run the air conditioner all the time, even when it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> they have a lot of blankets. There's four of them in the back in a pretty small space. And so they don't mind if it's a little bit chilly. So anyway, we'll see how this day goes. We'll show you the stats on what happened. Right, so it's 9.54 and the sun is almost off of the bus. <laughs> it's pretty close now. So let's turn around. Let's take a look. All right. We're getting about 1,800 watts of solar right now. So that will climb as soon as... These are completely clear, which should be just a few minutes now. It should be, you know, maybe within the next five, 10 minutes. There's not too many clouds. If we look, it's a little hazy, but it's not, uh, it's not a terribly cloudy day. So hopefully we'll get some good output today. All right, back in here, we're still at 49, but we're charging with 24 amps. As mentioned earlier, we're inside doing homeschool. So we're running this front air conditioner. I'm running my computer. We're running computers here. And in the back, we're running the air conditioner back here as well. So Dom's back here doing homeschooling using his computer. And this air conditioner is also on. It's on almost 24 seven. They really like, and it's cold back here. All right, we have a very simple Keurig coffee maker, which I don't use the caps. I actually use um, this little guy right here. And this thing's awesome. You just put coffee in it and it makes coffee. I've actually never used a K-cup in here um, because it just makes a lot of trash and I can just put my coffee in these and it does awesome. But what I wanted to show you was the effect of this on our solar power. So I think a lot of people, a lot of times when they talk about solar, they say, hey, I just wanna be able to make a cup of coffee and watch some TV, not realizing that making a cup of coffee is a giant draw. So anyway, I'm gonna show you that. Let me get my coffee stuff ready.
All right, so we've started that and we'll pan over. So 771 is about what we get. You know, if we're running all the air conditioners, you can see we've jumped to 2,500 watts is what we're getting from our solar now. But we'll see when the, when the heating element on the coffee maker kicks on. So 700 is our baseline. We got about 770, 768. And whoop, there we go, 2158. <laughs> so it takes a lot of power to make a cup of coffee. What that means is if you wanna make coffee and you wanna do it off of a battery, then you need a fairly large inverter that can handle some pretty big spikes. So we can see, you know, even with 2,500 watts of solar coming in, we are not charging our battery right now. We're actually losing seven amps. So fortunately, the coffee, the coffee is made pretty quickly. So this cup of coffee will finish in, I don't know, maybe less than a couple minutes. And so that load is not a load that's all day, but just when you're sizing an inverter, you have to make sure that you can account for a load that high. Okay, so now the water's coming out. We should see the load coming back down. So yes, the load is back down, but that gives you an idea of how high the load is when making coffee. All right, I think we're at full solar now. We should be out of the shade. So about 2,500 watts is what we're getting. It's 1027. So we'll keep an eye on it. It is a warm day, as I mentioned before. It's gonna get into the 80s. Maybe hit 90, but hopefully it stays in the 80s. All right, noontime check-in. We're at 71%. We're bringing in about 20 to 22 amps. 2,800 or so watts of solar. We're consuming uh, 1,400 roughly. We are running three air conditioners and an ice maker. All right, we're about to go exploring for a minute but this is the bus in full sun. Okay, it's about 6 p.m. now, and you can see that the trees have really shaded the bus, which is nice because, you know, it's cooler that way, but, and the trees are fairly far away. They're just really tall. We're done producing solar for the day. We've made about, I think, just over 17 kilowatt hours. I'll put the screen up of of our stats page for the solar charge controller so you can see it. And our battery is currently at about 85%, so it's done okay staying charged most of the day. Again, I'll show a graph of our usage and all that and post that as well, but it's done okay. It's been a beautiful day. It's not terribly cloudy, but it's, you know, there's a few clouds and there was a few points in time where, you know, the sun went behind some clouds, but it was mostly clear. So anyway, we'll make a wrap up video probably tonight of how the day went and how much generator we needed to use. So far it hasn't been too much and um, we'll see. So that's, that'll complete our one solar day. Today is June 12th and so we have a couple of more days of data to look at. So for June 9th, which is when this day was, we ended up producing 17.68 kilowatt hours with a peak output from our solar panels of 3,330 watts. Keep in mind that we have eight 435 watt sun power panels, which should give us a theoretical maximum of 3,480. Another thing to note that it is June, we are flat mounted, we do not tilt our panels in any way and so during the summer we can see really good numbers like this in fact the next day it rained and it was much more cloudy and we still got 11.32 kilowatt hours and our max for that day was actually 3587 watts which is higher than our theoretical rated maximum so i attribute that probably to some cloud edge effect so the next day we got 16.9 kilowatt hours more like the june 9th day with a peak of 3305 again it was windy and cloudy but mostly sunny during that day so it was a similar output and today when i'm recording this 
uh, it looks like we're on track to be about the same as the June 9th day. So about 17 kilowatt hours is what we're producing here. So an interesting thing to note is we are between the trees, as I showed in the pictures in the beginning of this video. And between 10 and 4, we have six solid hours where we have more than 1800 watts of solar coming in. Between 10 and 3, for those five hours, we actually produce more than 2500 and even quite a bit more than that during the peak. So the solar output here has been very good. So we did end up running our generator. We started at about 10 p.m. after our kids went to bed. And and ran it until about 1230 when I went to sleep. So that got us from 60% all the way back up to 86%. So why would we do that? Well, a few reasons. The reason we do this primarily is because it's nicer to our battery. If we keep the state of charge between 80 and 20%, there's a lot of white papers that suggest that you can get a lot more life out of your battery. And I'm not talking about just a few cycles. I'm talking about two to three times more life. And so when we can, we try to be as nice to our battery as we can. We run it with an air conditioner to keep it nice and cool. We do try to keep it between that 80 and 20%. In fact, our parameters on our BMS are such that when we say we're at 100%, we're actually only somewhere like 85%. When we say we're at zero percent, it's actually more like 25 percent or 30 percent. So we built this battery about five years ago and it has held up and worked wonderfully. So I think that that is working and it was already a 2012 battery. So we got it out of a Nissan Leaf and put it together. We have a bunch of videos on that. So that's about all I have for this solar day. It would be interesting for other people to make these types of videos to see how your system is running and how you run it. Again, we maximize our system for just ease of use. It's just one more thing that we don't really worry about. We don't stress about it. We just run everything as if we're plugged in. So what are your guys' thoughts on it?